It's hard to believe now that this Range Rover Sport has been gracing private school car parks and soccer fields for that matter for seven years now. Sure, it's had a bit of a nip and tuck in its life and it's got a little bit expensive, but you have to admit, it looks absolutely stunning, especially in this Indus Silver HSC R Dynamic trim that we have here. But does it still stack up as a luxury SUV or have others come in and stolen a bit of the limelight? We're gonna take you on a quick tour through the interior, go for a bit of a drive and see if it still makes sense in the luxury SUV marketplace. We're testing the Range Rover Sport HSC R Dynamic, equipped with the higher power V6 turbo diesel engine. It kicks off from $146,231, up $5,000 from when the facelift model first launched here in Australia two years ago in April 2018. In terms of engine, although it's the more powerful V6 option, it's the entry level choice in this higher end trim. You've only got two other grades above this, the Autobiography and the SVR each with a myriad of engine choices. Consider this model the start of the real fancy stuff in the Range Rover Sport catalogue. Real fancy is too true. Now I think this particular combo looks absolutely smashing. With the dynamic pack, you get some really nice features. You get this shadow chrome elements across the car, as well as painted trims all around, which add to its sportiness, not necessarily its ruggedness. Another point to make is that pretty much all of the options for this car are on the inside. So from an exterior perspective, what you see is what you get. The only exterior cost options on this car are privacy glass and a towing pack. The wheels are a no cost option, and I think the bright finish contrasted against the black really suits the silver paintwork. There are plenty of cool little details, such as these etched badges underneath the doors. Once inside, you're greeted by these beautiful 16-way adjustable leather seats and this equally nice machine-turned aluminium trim. It's quite special. With the facelift, JLR introduced the Pro Duo twin system. Now, it's quite intuitive to use and there are a couple of quick shortcuts, but it can be a little bit overwhelming at first. You can sort of control the seats and climate control from here, as well as interact with the screen above. Another option is this cooler box in the armrest. It'll help keep your sandwiches chilled during the school run. Once behind the wheel, it's a commanding experience. Vision is good and you can see the corners of the vehicle quite easily. You also get this awesome digital instrument cluster as standard and these great steering wheel controls. Now they're capacitive touch, so you can sort of gesture and direction to change volume and they also change their function depending on what mode you're using. For a bit over $4,000, you get the driver assist pack. Now this brings a 360 degree camera, adaptive cruise, park assist and rear traffic monitor. On a big car like this, it should really be standard. Now up back, this car is specced as the ultimate school bus. It has a twin 8-inch infotainment system that will take $5,250 out of your kids' trust fund. Space, though, is a bit of a commodity back here. Now, I haven't got too much room in front of my knees, but this is my driving position, and I'm about 6'1", to give you an idea. There is a lot of headroom, though, despite this beautiful optional sunroof taking up a bit of it. It's not as roomy as the Germans, however, but this flat floor gives plenty of room for the third child. If three's too many, and you just want two, They'll be absolutely sport back here, with plenty of luxuries and fun things to do. Natural light is heightened out back, thanks to a large, opening panoramic glass roof, which will set you back $4,420. There's also heated rear seats, two USB ports, and two HDMI inputs for the rear screen package. Now this car is equipped with a seven seat option, so it's only fair that I give it a go as an adult. I like these switches here, they're conveniently placed, making it nice and easy to lift the seat up. Clearly, this third row is reserved for children. Now, I don't want to spend too much time here. I've got no room and it's really uncomfortable. Consider it a five plus two, not a permanent seven seater. If you're chasing a bit more room in the third row, I'd recommend a BMW X5. If you do like the idea of seven seats, it'll add $3,890 to your total bill. It's worth mentioning, however, that when you choose seven seats, you get no space saver spare, only a tire repair kit. Another great feature is the ability to air the car down using these switches here, which makes it nice and easy to load your dog, groceries, whatever you're doing. Be wary though, this tailgate does hang low when the car is in its lowest setting. I've already bumped my head once by accident, so just be a little bit careful. The three litre V6 TDI, when equipped on dynamic models, makes 225 kilowatts of power and a big 700 newton meters of torque. This driveline enables the Range Rover Sport to tow up to 3.5 tonnes, making it well suited if you're frequently lugging a boat, caravan, 
or even a weekend toy. Now this particular model is equipped with the SDV6 turbo diesel. Now it's a great thing. It's smooth, it's got heaps of torque, and it generally does what you want it to do. Now, one thing I will say is that it's not super responsive. It doesn't feel like the old Audi SQ5 TDI that's kind of electric under the pedal. It needs a little bit of encouragement and a bit of forethought in order to get it going. Don't expect it to be an absolute light switch of a powertrain, it's just not that. This car's air suspension rides really well. It's quite comfortable, some of the bumpy stuff doesn't phase it too much, and you won't find any issues with it at all, really. One thing, though, is on really bumpy stuff or really steep drop-offs, it does get a little bit gnarly and you can feel a bit through the cabin. It's juxtaposed by the steering, however, which is quite slow and requires a lot of input to do anything. Behind the wheel, you've got a great commanding position. You feel like you're in charge of something and you feel like you're driving something special, which is quite important. Your forward visibility is good, at the side is good. There's a sense of openness about the cabin, especially with this great sunroof, which provides a lot of light throughout all the way to the third row, which is quite nice. Changing terrain modes, it's nice and simple. You've got this nice lever here that pops up and enables you control without having to use a touch screen. Sometimes I find tactile switches make it a little bit easier to use, which is nice and handy. It definitely feels luxurious behind the wheel. It's smooth, it's quiet, it feels nice to drive, and all these materials just cost at you and provide a warming sense of luxury. The Range Rover Sport is starting to show its age, however. Now, it's not as dynamically profound as a Mercedes-Benz alternative, nor is the 7 seat option as easy to live with as the X5. However, there are some good things going on here from a luxury perspective. It's endlessly customizable, there is so much choice, and you can truly make it to suit yourself. So, if you enjoy your cars like you enjoy your fashion, haute couture, bespoke, and a little bit special, then I think this might be the choice for you.